Many years ago, I came across a few lines in a book that I connected with. They were, it's easy to judge, but you never know another person's heart, what gives them strength and what breaks them down. I have learned to listen more and speak less. The result has been eye-opening conversations and inspirational moments that I have shared with you right here. Welcome back to my channel. It's Crystal One on One and we're on location at Le Chateau Brasserie Belge. Today I'm chatting with seasoned reggae artist. Music is his passion and I will say he knows a lot about events too. Shaka Mayanda. Thank you. How are you? I'm fine, still blessed. Mm -hmm. Welcome to the show. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Much. I know you're very busy at the moment because <laughs> yeah. I feel like this is the concert of all concerts that you've done, the safari of all safaris you've done. Yeah, close. 30 years in the industry. Yes. Wow, congratulations. It's actually more, yeah, 30. How do you feel? Uh, confused. <laughs> <laughs> How Can you believe they... 30 years have gone by? Yeah, you know, sometimes I think about it, but they move so fast, you know. Mm -hmm. And every time you're at it, so you, you don't notice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, did someone point it out to you or were you keeping track? You know, we did 20 years too. Mm -hmm. We did 20 years in uh, 2009. Okay. At uh, Serena. Oh, right. That's what, that was the second year safari. The second one. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. so we did 20 years then. So, you planned for this? I didn't even plan for it though because last year I would kind of said that's it. Yeah, you said you yeah, would quit. That, that's the it. The you know? safari you were done. And it, then it just happened that. Some people are asking about that, you know, about uh, what's going to happen and all that. Mm -hmm. Actually, didn't you say you quit events? Yes, mm. actually I did that, you know. Mm -hmm. But a lot of things happened. Okay. And every time I do events, I mean, well, music. Every time I do those music concerts, I always feel it's the last time, you know, for the, for the last 30 years, you know. Is it because you put like everything yeah, in it? Yeah, you put everything in it, you know, so... Last year was like the, the, the climax, you know? <laughs> so after, after the jazz safari, like what happens? Do you like disappear like for a week? You don't talk to anybody? You don't see anybody or? Um, that's, the, that's my life pretty much, you know? Mm -hmm. I just disappear anyway. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a recluse. Okay. <laughs> you know? Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. So one of the things I found fascinating is you play so many instruments. Most people see you when they see you on stage, you're normally on the, you know, on the guitar, but you play piano as well, drums. It's it? funny because um, I'm a fraudulent, I think I call myself a fraud. Because I, I, like piano, I just thought there's no piano to play in school, you know. The seniors have left, you know. Because Michael Cadu had left, Mark Cadu had left, Samson, you know. The mm -hmm. Cadu family used to play okay. piano in school okay. every year. Mm -hmm. So when they left, they used to come from King's College every Sunday to come and play. So I was thinking, let me just forge my way around, you know. Mm -hmm. So I went to the piano and started messing about. <laughs> Are you serious? Yes. Then I, uh, then isn't I, it then like I the learned, hardest instrument to learn? I learned like five tunes, you know. <laughs> Are you like, five I'm hymns, good now? Five hymns, you know. So we had to sing those five hymns every Sunday. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's all you knew. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. So you were born here in Uganda. Yes. Mm -hmm. Your father, a lot of people know your father for being a seasoned politician. Yeah. I'm, the one, who, I'm, I'm the one who missed being born in exile. So when, oh. they came, when they came back from exile, I was there. I'm the firstborn. Okay. So you were born here. <laughs> the others are not, uh, the others are exile kids. Okay. So I'm the firstborn here. Okay. Was that here in Kampala? Yes. Uh-huh. Yes. Mm. 72, yeah. They 72. Just come. I think they came back 71. All right. I believe, yeah. Okay. All right. So you're born here. Uh, how many older siblings do you have? Because I have three were born in England, in exile. Okay. Mm -hmm. I was born here, I think, I probably, it was in, I, I don't remember, but it was Bulange, you know, because when they came back, they went and, and, and stayed with their relatives ah. in Bulange area, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. which was a, a hotbed okay. of Uganda people and reality. And, you know, so all Do you friends. have any memories of that time when you came back? No, no chance, things? no idea. Okay. I only remember Chambogo because 72, we, they shifted to Chambogo. Oh. That's where I grew up. Okay, in Chambogo. Yes. Okay, and then school? Uh, I did one year at Nakasero mm -hmm. Primary School, uh, 78, I believe. And then a whole host of us left when the war was about to start. Mm -hmm. We were taken to boarding school, so we went to Bodo Junior. Uh -huh. A whole group of us. Some stayed, some, you know, my year, a lot of us went to Bodo. Okay. Uh, 
in 79. Okay. Yeah. So you went to Budo Junior? Yes. You were there for the whole of primary? Oh, yeah. Was that with your siblings as well? Mm, one only. Only one? Our first born was taken father in Massacre in Kako or something. He hated <laughs> you know, it. It's taken, almost like he was exiled. Uh -huh. He was exiled, really? you know. Mm. But even the way he came here, you know, he, the parents stayed in exile and they sent him like a parcel, you Aww. know. So we call him a parcel. He came as a parcel. <laughs> Came a lot on the plane as a baby. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you finished your P7? Uh, uh -huh. Then I went to King's okay. College. Yeah. Oh, it's the Buddha Junior yeah, King's yeah, College. Yeah, yeah. All the way? Yeah. All the way S6? S4. S4. Then Macquarie College. Okay. So S4, you said that you started playing the piano. Were you no, playing? P7. P7? P6, actually. Because then I was already in the school choir playing um, traditional instruments. Oh, right. But there was, a, there was a gap. So I, you know, I jumped in and played piano. Okay. Then uh, Kings, when I went to Kings, the, the, the school choir was non, non-existent at the time. Mm. So even the, the music room, because Kings College had a, a, the, the famous Budo College band. Mm -hmm. There were instruments, all these Andrew Casillas, Rob Mokasa, the Phillies, all those guys. Mm -hmm. It was done. There was nothing. Broken instruments, the room was leaking, the piano was out of tune. It was oh, terrible. Oh my goodness. But we used to go there and play there with the bats and the... You know, all the same. You yeah, still it was even get... in, in a bushy area. Mm -hmm. We went and played with the Bazanyes and the Gonza Kaguas, and in the piano that was out of tune. You mm -hmm. know, sometimes we used to go to chapel. Okay. Did you, you know. bring it up with the school administration? Nah, 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 nah. We just used to go and uh, fight over the piano because <laughs> they had to do the the hymns for uh -huh. Sunday. Okay. So on Saturday they had to rehearse. Mm. You know, so we, we used to sneak in at night or whatever. So at times people would hear pop music coming out of the chapel at night, you know. And Good Reverend Bombo, Reverend Bombo would complain. <laughs> <laughs> so, so tell me this, what was the first instrument you learned how to play? Because if you're saying you were playing traditional... Piano. What about traditional instruments, though? Because piano, mm -hmm. my friends, the ones I grew up with, the Gonzas, the Kaguas basically, mm. they, they had piano lessons. So they oh. used to do piano lessons at home. Uh -huh. Grade mm. one or grade two or something. So I was kind of playing with them. Mm. I would play one side of the piano, they would play the other side of the piano. So oh. the best parts of the piano, of the songs. I would play the best lower end parts and they would play the chords. Because mm -hmm. none of us at the time was playing with two hands. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then came the drums. Okay. But the drum thing had started a bit, you know, because we used to, for entertainment, they used to do, there was a certain, there was no disco or anything at the time. So drums, we used to use drums. Okay. So those drums are not playing traditional music. Oh. We were playing pop music with Re drums. So we created beats, you know? What? Yeah, we used to create beats in okay. school. Okay, that's really cool, actually. You know? Actually, that's how even all these churches started. Um, in like 81, the Kaiwas and all those people, they created certain beats that you knew that this beat is for this song, but it was all drums. Mm -hmm. not, no, you know, you know, no melodic instruments at all. No guitars, nothing. Wow. Okay. So we used to cre create uh, beats at school, mm -hmm. uh, mainly with older students. Because mm -hmm. at school, I remember in Budo, there was a guy called Mutumba, who used to make beats with his mouth, you know, and bang doors and whatever. He was crazy. <laughs> he was, you know, the, the groove. He, was, he had groove, you know. Yeah. Him. So we formed the Kaka Trio. Like on Saturdays during after housework in the, in, in the Kavinja court, you know, place where the, the boys end. Mm -hmm. So buckets. The, the two drums we had and buckets. <laughs> so Nicholas Kalanzi, I think he's now in America, he used to play one. Mm -hmm. I used to play one and Mutumba used to play one. Then there was, a, you know, the other better drummers like Musoke Richard. You know, he's a pastor now. He was incredible on drums. What class was this? Huh? This what is uh, P4, I think. P4, 81. Okay, you know? so was the music thing in your family? Did you get it from someone it's in your funny, family? It's funny, yeah, because when I grew up, my parents came with a lot of records, ah. LPs from exile. Mm. All sorts of music was there in that house. So they had a collection. A whole stack. Wow. So all our cousins, you know, some of them would become musicians later, used to come to the house. And the LPs had lyrics, so we used to sing. You know, Stephen Suboga in mixed talents, mm -hmm. you know. His brothers, Harry Rwanga, used to come for holidays, you know. All those so were you encouraged now. at home? No, you there was no encouragement. Like that, oh, you're going to do music. No, mm -hmm. no, no. no. Oh, you, you just oh, here, try yeah, this, try so that. You, you, we used to hear music. Hey, you know, it was like the LPs were too many. Everything: Neil Diamond, Carol King, Sammy Davis Jr., Frank Sinatra. You know, mm. it, Carol King, the, the mixture. Oh my goodness. James Brown, Fats Domino. It's like 
you had blues, so soul, there was blues, jazz, mm -hmm. soul, disco, you know, you name it. The yeah. only thing that was in there was reggae. But I think there was a Jimmy Cliff LP at home. It was Jimmy Cliff at the time. It was a Jimmy Cliff record. And yet reggae is like But your it wasn't first like the roots now. at the time. Uh -huh. So we didn't have any of that. That came into the house in 81. Another aunt so of mine. All the Lovers Rock came much later. No Lovers Rock. Mm -hmm. The first like proper reggae record that came was 81. Okay. Another aunt who came from exile. I uh -huh. don't know how she got it, but she came with a Bob Marley LP. <laughs> Rastaman Vibration. Okay. That was the first time I had roots reggae. Did you feel something? Yeah, more? that was 81. I, I don't know what it was, but it wasn't like, because now, you know, um, zipping up my boots and all that stuff had come in, going back to my roots. That music, you know, the funk, mm -hmm. stomp, mm -hmm. that was the music, you know. At the time, the Jimmy Katumba guys who used to dance, it was all that, that was the music, disco and funk. For some reason, even at that age when we played that record at home, something totally, we never had anything like that. It was off, it was off beat. The message was talking about very hardcore stuff yes, that we never had, you know? It's intense. That was it. And I could sing to this day every lyric on that whole LP, every word. So was it something like you all connected to it or was it just I you? did. Me and my brother used to sing that, you know, the one I followed, my late brother. Mm -hmm. We used to sing that Rastaman Vibration album, word to word. But it's, it's stuck, in, you know. I'm the one who stuck, stuck it out. Because <laughs> I know you said it again and again that reggae is your first love. Yes. So 81, yes. But even after that LP, mm. I was still more into the breakdance thing. Mm -hmm. Hip-hop. So the LP was in the head, but I wasn't doing reggae. Yeah, I didn't even know how to do it. young also. Nobody though. was doing it here anyway. Nobody was doing reggae mm. at all. You were young also, nobody though. was doing it here anyway. Nobody was doing reggae mm. at all. Ah. So there, there were no influences. So you could not meet anybody who does it. So the LP was at home. That was it. Mm. But it was more, you know, break dance and that stuff, funk. So with know? this influence of all this music, and you're telling me you had your friends, you you come up with your own beats and stuff. Did you ever think that music would be a big part of your life? Nah. It was just fun, all fun. Because you know, um, I was I was handpicked to join the choir. Okay. In 82. Uh -huh. We were the youngest then. For some reason, I don't know why they picked us. Okay. They picked three of us. Me, Moses Chinove, and um, Edward Walugen. Mr. Katuma just said, you three come and join the choir. Maybe when, had singing, We're not been doing singing or doing anything. I, no? was, I was crazy about football at the time. That's it. No school, just football. Everything was about football. Oh. Villa. I, I, I had scrapbooks with all the World Cup teams and the pictures. I, knew, I could name the Cameroon team, you know. <laughs> I used to write letters to FIFA, get replies from the German national team, man, from the, post, to the post office, you know, get, get those uh, souvenirs. Mm -hmm. We started a, a World Cup at school, you know, <laughs> Espana. We started Espana with Moses Chinave, Mark, 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 I think, Molomba, David Mboa, mm -hmm. you know, Chimera mm -hmm. Kagua. We started like a, a World Cup, <laughs> dormitories, you know, what? you're Germany, you're Brazil, <laughs> you're... It was a proper tournament with everything. Hey, yeah, oh sounds yeah. like the stakes so music, were very high. Music was just that you're in the school choir and you sleep late and you get benefits of going out of the school. But you said that all your focus was football. Football. So books? Nah. You were being I don't forced even, to... I don't, I don't even think I, I, I went to school at all. I can tell you that. What does that mean? I went to school, I think, to make friends. I never focused on at all. Okay. All my life in school, I never ever focused on books. Even the teachers knew it. They so just they, knew that guy, for this, I don't know why, I just didn't. So football, they just football, let football. you be? They just let me be. I never used to like fail. But or you anything. still do the exams. Yeah, I'll do the exams and not fail. Okay. But you'd, you'd coast I, through. I, 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 yeah, I'll just wait for the last week to revise. Okay. I mean, okay. like in HSC college school, I don't think I went for any afternoon lesson <laughs> at all. <laughs> I that they, off, I would, you used to hide in the dormitory, have friends who are prefects, sleep, go to town to watch bands. By then, now music had caught on. Mm -hmm. you know, so school, it football just, and music is what I had friends. Time. We made friends. You know, we went to boarding school so young, you know? Yeah, so that's so, where you made your real friendships. Yeah, mm -hmm. families, you know? 
mm-hmm. to this day. Yeah. You know, one thing I noticed, and even just reading a lot of your posts, is the, your memory. You remember names, you remember dates, you remember details. I don't know if I'm the first person telling you this. This is only because of conversations and reading what you write about. Have you always had that kind of memory? Because there are a lot of people who don't remember. They have yeah, big gaps and they I've can't remember had that the kind years. Of memory. Um, I think because I didn't fill it with books, so there's space in the memory, <laughs> in the memory cards. <laughs> don't listen to him. <laughs> so, because you remember details. Yes. Even when you break down, especially now that you've done so many different concerts and events, you're able to still break down what happened with this one, that one. It's, it's, it's quite something. Yeah, it's because my father gave me his name, mm-hmm. both his names. I'm the only one he gave his names. Mm-hmm. So I think I took over. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So what was your dad like, though? It's funny because my, my dad, li- li- you know, he music was his thing mm-hmm. i mean those who so the up, collections he's the he, one him and my mother because mm. the thing is my father those who grew up with him who know him mm-hmm. said he was the best dancer in this town <laughs> okay so he used to tell us a story that you know I even missed uh, revising at, at, at makere because we had a, 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 we had to go and dance at night so i came late the teachers were wondering why aren't you doing because just him and dancing mm. you know so music classical music he had everything, man. Mm-hmm. He wanted to learn everything. Latin, French, ah. music. But recently my mom told me, because we grew up with my mom not showing that side, mm. although she was in the choir in all these churches and all that, but mm. she didn't show that side. We didn't grow up knowing it. So she told me stories and said, I hear you talking about your dad, but you don't know. Your music comes from me, comes from my gene. What? Not, not your father. So she told me stories. I was in the 60s. Even artists used to come here. She used to go and host them. She was in the National Theatre as an actress, singing, you know, Makula Gakula, all those things she was in, you know. Mm-hmm. So she said, you know, so that's one part we didn't know. I didn't know that until... I think that's one of the coolest things year. about getting older. Yeah. When you start to hear these stories and you get to see your parents in a different light altogether. No, I think when she entered church, she closed that chapter. Oh, she, didn't she want like people, left it behind. She didn't that. want people to know that she had swag. <laughs> Back in the day. Back in the day, yeah. <laughs> okay, so school was never a thing for nah. you. You were there just I, because I, you had I still, to uh, I still hate school. I don't like dogma. Let's mm. put it that way. I, don't, mm. I, I can't. I can't be put in a conformity. Yeah. I can't. You can't do it. My spirit won't allow it. Mm. So it was that thing, you have, you have to wake up at this time. Why? You <laughs> just have to, you know. School was like punishment to me. Was but let, like let, how... later in time, you know, mm-hmm. we started enjoying, but I'm going to see my friends, you know. Okay. Just but how that. did your parents take it? My dad is an academic. Because he said if your dad, yeah. Yeah, you know, academics was his thing. So was that a conversation you kept having oh, again and yeah. again? Oh, yeah. And the time we grew up, musicians were the riffraff. Yeah. You know? Mm. Musicians, see, apart from Jimmy Katumba, who are the uh, in a proper structure. Everyone know? else. And Jimmy Katumba, you know, Jimmy Katumba and Debon is all those people who are graduates. Mm. So he used to recruit from Chambogo, from Makere. Mm. So those were proper. They and had they other careers, respected. Alan Waligo and all these guys. Yeah. But they had other things they were doing off stage. But me, uh, but one time my father came to school, S4, I think, where, you know, I think after Mox, they were saying now this. <laughs> this person, you know. when while we're here topping classes, this guy is, <laughs> and we had a, a headmaster who I'll never forget, you know, mm-hmm. Mr. Busuga. Yeah. Uh-huh. So he told my father, you know what, in Uganda, mm. that's what he said. He, he, this one, now it's too late, just let the guy be. Let him be that. It's too late, really. A headmaster, too. You know, he said, or maybe he just saw that. You know, he said, you can't change destiny you know that's what it's gonna be so just let him be uh, don't put pressure on him <laughs> a very hard thing to tell a parent oh yeah Mr. Very Usura, difficult you know, thing. i'll never forget that statement but he helped you though oh yeah that means he saw who you were and he accepted it i'm sure that was difficult because even like you said reggae was not there were no reggae musicians here even by then we we're still doing hip-hop mm. r&b with the kagwas you know with that you know before hot soul crew because <laughs> yes. old school crew was not called old school, you know, we, we didn't call it that before. Mm-hmm. So originally it used to be called Accelerando. Accelerando what? Accelerando. 
Alex. That's Bazania's words. Had, <laughs> Bazania, Bazania had all these Latin words. No, mm. no wonder he studied law. So, <laughs> but he was one of those musicians who taught him. So self-taught, he mm. would play all the instruments well. Wow. So, we formed that, you know, and they used to write songs, like over a hundred songs, you know, proper structured songs. What happened? R&B, proper songs that Babyface can sing, you know. Mm -hmm. So what happened? I used to Did keep all the records. I'm going to look for those way. records. Lyrics, everything. Black book. You have them? Oh, I must have them somewhere. I'm sure I do. Wow. So they wrote songs. It's me, the reggae thing came back 88. Because mm. they were write, writing the songs I was learning playing drums, you know? Mm. And then I read a book about Sharpville Massacre this, in Soweto in 88. That mm -hmm. was the first song I wrote. That's when the reggae thing now came back. So that was your first song? Yes. In 88? Yes. Okay. So I left Hot Soul Crew. I left them to do the hip hop and the crew cuts and the... <laughs> and now I said, I said I'm going to do reggae. What did they say? When you told no, I think them. they continue doing. They recruited new members, you know. No, but did they did they <laughs> encourage you? Were they like? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, reggae. I mean, they they like reggae too. They just, <laughs> but it was beyond reggae because now it wasn't just about music. Ah, you started your spiritual so you started, journey. You started understanding what this guy was saying in '81. What is it about? Mm. You know, mm. because reggae pretty much is music. Yeah, like any music, like disco, or whatever. And music and reggae wasn't started by Rastas uh, anyway. It never was. Was this by Africa? I, I know people were doing uh, rock steady from from doing ska to rock steady to uh, um, rock, rock steady was like lovers rock. Ah, okay. It's yeah. Okay, so you leave my career college. You finished. Sit. Oh, that was another battle. Ha. Huh. Uh huh. What happened? Don't forget, uh, I did my first concert. I was in S five. S six. S6, I think. First you... concert. School. Yeah, we did a concert, Little Flowers. Okay, you organized was, it. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I was still in school when I did. Mixed Talents was my backing band, you know. <laughs> okay. So now, while at school, in the holidays, went and did the show. Reggae show, the very first reggae show, I believe, here. Mm -hmm. Proper, totally reggae. And? Students came and you know, you know those days wasn't too much. No, no. You know, that was it. Mm -hmm. So students, it was fantastic, you know. Mm -hmm. And I already organized shows at college school because I brought mixed talents to to Macquarie College. I brought uh, Big Five, Macquarie College. Mm -hmm. I was already organizing shows mm -hmm. instead of doing studies. And this is way back. <laughs> this is way back. <laughs> so you were making some money. What? No much. It was just for the love of it. I don't, I don't think we made any money at all. I'll tell you something. The, the first show we did in '91, we went. You know, psycho styling. You know, the posters. Mm -hmm. There was no printing or anything like that. So they used to go and, you yeah. know, like how they do the exams. Mm -hmm. Photocopies were a new thing then. Mm -hmm. So I wrote on every poster. The debt, the fee. You know, on every poster. <laughs> Like 500 posters. Oh my goodness. Okay. After that, I made my own tickets. Mm. So I got like a book, cut out papers, and got my dad's seal. He had a seal. I sealed all the tickets. And then I drew, I painted on them. With, I bought a yeah, hard color paper for geography. Mm -hmm. You know, so I never used them for geography. <laughs> so <laughs> I got uh, red, gold, and green color. You know, the rasta color thing. Uh -huh. So I started on each ticket. Red, gold, and green. So in, in my color case, the yellow, red, and you know, green were, were that small. All the other colors, were, I never used them in school. <laughs> I wrote on, I drew on every ticket. How much was that show? How much was that? One thousand, I think. One thousand shillings. 1, I still have the poster. Okay. Then, me and Michael Karule, who I met at college school, we started putting up the posters ourselves, the two of us. On Kamala Road, William Street. So, yeah, we've done it all, man. So who was encouraging you? Did you have the, like some adult mentors at spirit, that time? The music spirit. The spirit. I was had friends you. like Hope, you know. Well, not the Hope Mukasas were like, you know, ah, Hope is the superstar. Uh -huh. But my bro, my koja, you know, Steven Suga was singing in mixed talents for years. Okay. Timothy Kabarika Gua. I had so many. So you had people that old Budonias could... in that circle who were in music, ah. but as a hobby. But Tim Kabali had a band, remember. 
it was one of the best youth bands here. It was the best. Mm -hmm. You know, the Ruchis were in it. So did you ever have a chance to? Oh yeah, 89 is the one who gave me the first chance. Like when I brought Outbreak to Budo too, in 89. Okay, okay. We did a show there. Mm -hmm. And then 89 he said, you know what? I want you to come for our last show because they're all living, you know, going to outside countries. Okay. You know, all of them, most of them. So I want you to come and see uh, and sing at the show at Calenda mm -hmm. Rest House. And I want you to do original songs. Original that, songs? Only, that you've written. So it was Tim Cavalli. Who, was that the first time you were doing your own song? Oh, yes. You're... First time. So 89, I went on stage at Calenda Rest House, December. How was that? It was fine, you know, it was fun. I even had a trench coat, like the Matrix. <laughs> <laughs> like a big black one? Yeah. Okay. So we did the, I did two songs, I think, my own composition. Mm -hmm. That was the first, so I said, oh, okay. So Tim Cavalli, you know, is wow. very instrumental, mm. extremely instrumental. Because we started seeing him as kids yeah. in primary. He was already playing with the filial tires, you know, small guy playing, and you were thinking, what the heck, you know? <laughs> So everybody wanted to be like Tim. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So you left Makere College. Did you sit? Yes, I did a you six. Sat. Okay, you sat. I did a you six finished. of my all my other. They said you have to go to university. Blah blah blah. There are some Indian friends of my father, Ismailis. Said mm -hmm. we are going to take him to um, Canada. Oh. By force. He has to do university. Bandali Jaffa affair with these guys. <laughs> I said nah. How did you get out of that? I said let me learn some computer course. So I went and did with a captain. Captain used to have a, what's a NCR mm -hmm. opposite Kampala Casino. Okay. Because it used to be a car. Before when computers were like the green screens and <laughs> so I decided, you know, just to get a certificate. I was marking about. Uh huh. You're Corel like, okay, they want me to give them I did some Corel kind of draw paper. at uh, when it used to be called Fresh Foods. You know, where, what's that building? Now, where is Cafe Java's now? Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. It used to be called uh, Fresh Foods. So there was like a Scano used to teach us Corel Draw. Oh my goodness. Now when you look we back... We were the first guys to do those things on computer. Mm -hmm. you know? Did you but manage I, to I, I use that in other school, ways? So, yeah, I did that. It's even I now. Thought so. I yeah, thought so. Yeah, art, art I used to like, but my, my, my old students always remind me that even in exams, I used to finish first. So you could just leave? I just draw, yeah, so that I finish <laughs> and think about other things. <laughs> so the Edimato was always remind but you gay. Even S4, I remember finals. But still, whatever, like after 30 minutes, you're done. And you're like, okay. Uh, I, mean, I was just looking around. Today. I just couldn't stand school. Wow. But I think the brain was grasping a lot of things from school. Yes, just not the... the, the Without me putting my mind to it. Mm. But I think the brain was... Okay. Yeah. All right. So I didn't go to, un to university. Okay. So, but you were doing your music at the same time you now, were doing Now, that's when course. you started doing shows. Uh -huh. That's when now we did full swing. Mm -hmm. Proper. Right. Proper shows. We were the first people to do shows at Sheraton. Mm -hmm. By then, Sheraton was the the, the oh venue. just to go to Sheraton. To go to the garden. It was a day oh. out. <laughs> yeah. You know, the students used to walk. You know, there was no cabs and or maybe mm -hmm. twenty guys in a cab or something. No, uh, and we would make plans and would keep those plans, but keep those appointments. There was so so much so everything was sacred. Mm. Soda was sacred. <laughs> Chocolate was sacred. Chocolate was Somebody's time was sacred. Everything was sacred. Everything mm -hmm. is everywhere now, so people don't put value to it. Yeah. But by then, just getting a lift mm. was wow. a big deal. You know, to come for a show when you have only 2K or some people like I'm over at Sheraton, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, people just used to come and watch. And people were saying, like, the show would end and then they would walk home. Oh, yeah. At that time. Oh, yeah. Mm hmm. And our, our people, the people who are slightly older than us used to go to Shays and these places. Mm, yeah. They used to wait until morning because those days you couldn't work at night anyway. Mm -hmm. So they used to to wait till morning to go back home, to walk yeah. from Shays to Mutundu or wherever you came from, on foot. That's crazy. In the morning. No, that's what, no, God that's, knows what state you're in. Yeah, but that's what they call passion. <laughs> you know, going out to a disco and then going back with, you know, with all the dust on the shoes. <laughs> It meant something. <laughs> but now it doesn't. Then now people go in at 9 and at ah, 11, they're now tired. They're like, what DJ, what are you playing? What? You know, mm -hmm. Those we days, danced. wow. <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. Everything was sacred. So we miss that people now don't put value to anything. Okay. Which is uh, very sad. Yeah, that's very true.